The Most STEM Wins grant program and pursuing a career in healthcare and STEM, next on City Corner. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. We've been covering some of the excellent initiatives of Slate, the St. Louis Agency on Training and Employment. And today we're gonna to take that a step further and look at another program and partnership that they have with St. Louis Community College and specifically with, with Workforce Solutions at St. Louis Community College. And I'm joined by Kevin Talbot. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sarah. It's very nice to meet you. And I'm glad to have the opportunity to bring awareness to the Most in Wins program and accelerated training programs we have through the Workforce Solutions Group. No, that's great. And I started off with an intro. It's a lot to say. I know it's kind of a lot of words to put in there, but the most M wins grant program. And then more broadly, we're going to talk about sort of pursuing a career in the STEM fields and, um, and healthcare related fields. But I wanted to kind of set the stage. I mean, you open the paper, you read the headlines. There's a lot on getting into science, technology, engineering, medicine, healthcare. Is this just where, where the action is right now? Is this where the demand is? It is where the demand is. And in particular, uh, right now, we'll be talking about some healthcare opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, because within the sciences, health sciences is very large, very uh, a lot of opportunities here in the St. Louis area. Um, and through the Workforce Solutions Group at St. Louis Community College, we have concentrated on accelerated training programs to help individuals get into those healthcare opportunities. Okay, well let's talk a little bit more about Workforce Solutions, because we hear we know St. Louis Community College, uh, but not a lot of people may be uh, familiar with Workforce Solutions. Right, so Workforce Solutions Group is the Workforce Division of St. Louis Community College, um, and really leveraging growth for education through um, continuing education, corporate services and community services, we provide opportunities in all of those areas through, again, a workforce point of view. Okay. Um, those divisions are all headquartered at our corporate college located in Bridgeton. Okay. Um, and it's a great facility. It's um, state of the art, gives opportunities for individuals, for the community, for business and business groups to hold functions there, mm -hmm. teach courses. Um, and so we're very happy to have that opportunity available um, and be a part of St. Louis Community College. And when we talk about sort of the candidates and the people sort of bent coming to that campus, we're looking at a wide range of those, of those students essentially, or those people taking advantage of the courses. You're looking at people who might just be right out of college to people who already are well into a career and need to take an extra, go and pursue another area. Is that correct? Can you it kind is. of talk about that spectrum? It is. Um, individuals that are attracted to accelerated training can come from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. um, they can be young with no experience. Um, they could be individuals that have had numerous careers. Mm -hmm. um, they're looking for new opportunities. They're looking for ways to perhaps um, restart a career. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's pretty wide open in terms of individuals that might be attracted. Um, in this case, we um, see a lot of individuals that, again, do get those starts. Um, because they're um, looking for um, ways to improve what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes they have um, started programs mm -hmm. previously, but perhaps were unsuccessful mm -hmm. in the completion of those. Mm -hmm. um, and then they're looking for what they know are going to be in-demand opportunities. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular with healthcare, mm -hmm. um, we know that there are opportunities available. Okay. Um, and through the Most M Wins program, mm -hmm. we do concentrate right now on science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. That's really the STEM part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the MO part is, of course, uh, Missouri, <laughs> because it's a program that's implemented through Missouri, through mm -hmm. the community colleges mm -hmm. um, that are associated with the Missouri Community College Association. Mm -hmm. And then the WINS portion of that acronym stands for Workforce Innovation Networks. Wow. And the funding for the program comes through the U.S. Department of Labor, okay. who incentivizes us to come up with in, in incentives, um, with innovative ways to engage individuals mm -hmm. around these programs. Okay. Um, and so I would like to talk a lot more in terms of the details of the Most in Wins program. Yeah, absolutely. Because I was going well, you did a great job, you know, explaining with the grant because a lot of a lot of this obviously wouldn't be possible with that. And I think there's one other grant, the HPOG 
grant, if you want to allude to that, that also is connected to that to this. Is that as well? Yeah, there are a lot of initiatives right now um, through either the U.S. Department of Labor or the U.S. Department of mm -hmm. Education, uh, mm -hmm. with, which is one of the funding sources called mm -hmm. HPOG, mm -hmm. uh, the Health Professionals Opportunity Grant. Mm -hmm. And so as a training provider of Slate, we utilize all of those mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. to um, attract individuals into these programs, uh, but then assist them with funding opportunities and funding options um, as they pursue mm -hmm. those. No, I think that's great. And I, I, the reason I bring that up too is a lot of times we'll hear, you know, again, you're reading in the headlines that from a federal level, there's an, an initiative or a push to get more people mm -hmm. into a certain field. But I don't think the average person at home understands how that has to be implemented from a federal level all the way down. Right. And so it is available through, you know, it does happen through these, through these grants and through services. Mm -hmm. But yes, let's go ahead and move into some of the details. I know we've been looking at some photos, mainly looking at medical assistance and being a medical assistant and patient care technician programs. So do you want to talk a bit more about that? Sure. What I'd like to do is, is um, kind of start at the beginning okay. in terms of how people get involved with okay. uh, the Most In Wins grant. Mm -hmm. And in particular, they start with a program called the Portal. Okay. And it's the entry point. It's a pre-employment, pre-training program that allows individuals to get ready for their workforce training. Oftentimes we see individuals that have barriers in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, they have things that are obstacles that may keep them from being ready to focus on their program. So through the portal, they get an opportunity to learn about their skill sets. Okay. We'll do some assessments to see what the skill level they're at for the workplace, mm -hmm. um, for community college credit programs. So we're looking at college placement mm -hmm. to see where they're going to be ready. Um, we also look at their digital literacy skills. Mm -hmm. um, Sarah, every program today, every occupation involves a computer in yes. some way. Um, and so we're looking at those and it's an opportunity for those individuals to see their strengths, mm -hmm. um, but then also set a plan to work on any weak areas. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so that's where they start. Once they've completed their assessments, they get an opportunity to work with a career pathway coach. Mm -hmm. And that career pathway coach starts to really set the stage for those strengths and weaknesses from the assessments mm -hmm. and setting up programs and classes that they're going to be enrolling those students mm -hmm. in that match both short-term and long-term oh. objectives. Wow. It's very exciting. Um, it also includes something called a career blueprint where we get an opportunity to gather information about the student, create that plan, talk about barriers, making mm -hmm. sure that there's no barriers in their way, talk about supportive services that are available through mm -hmm. the college mm -hmm. or through the community, and get them ready for that training program. And is this a plan that they will be following through uh, their entirety uh, from start to finish, essentially? It is. It's very cool. It's a document that is created for them and then given to them. Mm. They can add to it. Um, both the coach and the student can add things to it, but it's a document that we give that really is intended to be a living record of what they're That's working fantastic. on. Yeah. And then also within that portal, they get an opportunity to do workshops to get ready for their resume development. Mm. We give them interview skill opportunities. And then something that's really new for us that we're very proud of is an opportunity to do activities and some behavioral exercises around work ethics and work values. Mm. We know that from information that we get from our employers, mm -hmm. about 66% of the employers that participate with us in surveys tell us that they see a high level of their applicants that don't have strong right. work ethics and work value skills. Mm -hmm. So we get an opportunity to role play with them. Mm -hmm. We're working on attendance, on appearance, on attitude and getting them ready for that workforce mm -hmm. training program. That's really interesting because yes, I, I, I've, I've read that and I hear a lot about that, that the education and the readiness on the academic and on the training side is one thing, but there's a whole level of sort of being integrated from, if you will, sort of a social cultural level, which is how do you fit into a broader, mm -hmm. to a bigger company or a workplace and sort of gel, if you will, with, right. with, your, with your colleagues. Do you wanna move then in from once you get past the portal program, if you're, take for example, following the, uh, the career of one of these healthcare sciences, uh, where you go from there, from the portal program? Sure, yeah. So with the completion of that portal, then the individuals are ready to be enrolled in the program of choice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about um, the medical assistant program mm -hmm. and the patient care technician yeah. program. Um, both of them are entry level programs into the healthcare industry mm -hmm. and into the healthcare science pathway. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in this case, we'll talk about patient care first. Mm -hmm. That is for individuals that are interested in providing um, patient-focused service within a hospital mm -hmm. setting. Um, they're assisting patients in acute care within a hospital room. Mm -hmm. They're helping them with their daily activities. And students that are interested in that prepare through our training program that's nine weeks in length. Mm. Six weeks of that training is classroom instruction. Mm -hmm. And three weeks is clinical instruction that they do at the hospital environment. Uh, so in this case, it's a great opportunity to learn both um, classroom and clinical training. Mm. We do that specifically with SSM Health here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Um, and we teach the classroom training um, at the college at one of our facilities. Mm -hmm. And then again, the clinical training is done at the hospital. Um, it's a Monday through Friday opportunity mm -hmm. um, uh, for, the, for the classroom opportunity. And when they go to their clinical assignment, uh, they do three shifts um, on the floor with the other um, individuals there in the right. hospital. Well, it's a comprehensive program, and we're going to get into, I know we have to talk about the patient care technician program. We're going to have to take a quick break, but we've got some information there for you on the screen. We've been talking about the Mo STEM Wins grant program, and there's the website right there where you can go to the St. Louis Community College's website to learn more about stepping into a STEM career and watching your job opportunities grow. Um, we've been talking about, Kevin's been talking about specifically how you reach out to St. Louis Community College and some dates, and we've got that there for you on the screen as well. That's taking you through July through October. And again, interested, this is the website that you should head to to learn more information about the medical assistant and patient care technician programs. Uh, again, Forest Park Campus, and then as we refer to, one more full page graphic, uh, the HPOG grant. Uh, and this is again facilitated through Slate. Uh, and you can reach out to them at stlworks.com or the number on your screen, 314-589-8000. But there is more to go, more to continue, a really fascinating program that's going on. So please stay with us. We're just going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat, write, or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. Yeah. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. I'm going to continue my discussion with Kevin Talbot. He's program manager at Workforce Solutions at St. Louis Community College. And we were talking about the patient care technician program before break. And there's also the medical assistant uh, program that you wanted to kind of give some more information on as well. I would. I would like to, yeah, because it's another entry level program, but different than patient care mm -hmm. in that it's for individuals that want to learn and be prepared to do both administrative and clinical tasks. Mm -hmm. within a clinical environment. Mm -hmm. So when you go to your primary care provider, that individual that meets you um, at the front desk, mm -hmm. that is uh, checking your appointment, checking your insurance, that is the medical assistant. Mm -hmm. And that medical assistant also works in the back of the office to take your vital signs, start your electronic health record, and get you ready to see the physician. Mm -hmm. So that's what a medical assistant does, and individuals that are interested in that are interested in working in that kind of physical um, uh, environment where the physicians mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. clinics mm -hmm. um, are taking care of us. Um, in that regard, they also do a combination of classroom and clinical training. It's a much longer program. It's mm -hmm. approximately 22 weeks, uh, weeks in length mm. and gives an opportunity to, to an individual to learn, again, all of those different tasks. 
Um, we work with different employer partners for that program. Mm -hmm. Presently, we work with Wash U School of Medicine mm -hmm. um, and SSM uh, Medical Group. Mm -hmm. They both have cohorts going on right now with individuals that are in that program. Mm. And coming up this summer, we're going to be working with Mercy okay. um, for opportunities to become a medical assistant. And with it, when you mentioned when people complete the, complete the program, I mean, is employment pretty much the next step? Or I mean, is there sometimes a lapse or waiting period? Or is there still, as we mentioned at the start of the show, that there is a demand and a need that you can step right into employment? How does that work? Yeah, it's definitely the next step. Huh. Um, for these programs, mm -hmm. with our employer partners, we actually do screening together. Mm -hmm. So those individuals have had an opportunity to interview prior to getting into the training program. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, at successful completion of the program, um, both are really looking for each other because the employer partners are looking for those candidates just as much as the students are looking right. for employment opportunities. So it's a great match for those two mm -hmm. to come together. Um, over the last several years, we've had about a 90% success rate wow. in terms of success completing those programs. In particular, for the medical assistant program, mm -hmm. we have a 100% success wow, rate for those individuals that get their clinical certified medical assistant certification. That's fantastic. So it's yeah. uh, it's got very good results and we are very proud of, of those those individuals. So let's say somebody's listening to this and they've thought about or heard, you know, I really should pursue a career as a medical assistant or in this field, but they think I don't have a certain amount of money saved away or I don't have a car or I don't have what we might allude to barriers to perhaps pursuing further education or education in general or this program. What do you see in response to that uh, for those people who might be interested or want to learn more but do have these kind of set of barriers that sure. would potentially prevent them from doing it. Well the great news is the portal program that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier is 100% funded by the Most In Wins grant so there's no cost to the individuals to get started wow. uh, for that training program. Mm -hmm. With regard to the training programs themselves the patient care technician um, cost $2,455. The medical assistant program costs $5,510. Mm -hmm. Both of those programs are uh, approved programs through the Missouri Career Centers. Through the Slate office, we work specifically with them on funding through the Department of Health and uh, Human Services mm -hmm. called the HPOG grant. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a big opportunity for individuals to get funding for these entry level opportunities within healthcare. It's okay. a healthcare specific program. But we also work with other providers of funding. Individuals that are um, receiving food stamps through mm -hmm. the SNAP program also mm -hmm. have opportunities through Skill Up to be funded. Um, so we work with the Slate office. We also work with St. Louis County to locate funding sources for all of those different um, scenarios. So there are methods essentially to sort of minimize those barriers for people who are interested, which leads kind of to the eligibility then. So mm -hmm. who can, who, who is, who's eligible to, to participate in the program and to enroll? So for minimum eligibility, they need to be 18 years okay. of age with a high school diploma or equivalence. Mm -hmm. um, they also need to be um, eligible to work in the United States mm -hmm. um, and be employable in a healthcare setting. One of the things that um, in these individuals do go through prior to their training acceptance is they will do background checks, mm -hmm. drug screens, um, and a physical, and they'll also be up to date on their immunization so that they're ready to go into that that mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. clinical setting. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, talk about sort of uh, positive outcomes or case studies, if you will, because I think sometimes for anyone watching this, the best thing is to make it sort of relatable to say, oh, Susie did this, and here's right. an example of how she made it work for her and where she is now. Are there any that come to mind that are probably the best sort of, you know, not necessarily case studies, but testimonials that you have um, about, about the program? Well, sure. I would say probably word of mouth is still the biggest way in which individuals hear about the program. Okay. You've heard about the details. There's a lot of interest in healthcare, mm -hmm. but certainly those individuals that successfully pass the program that get their certifications are really telling the mm -hmm. community about mm -hmm. that opportunity. Mm -hmm. We also provide success stories through newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, recently, we had a newsletter um, through the Slate office that talked about one of our students who successfully completed the patient care mm -hmm. technician program mm -hmm. after a couple of uh, rough beginnings um, mm -hmm. in terms of getting that. And also for the medical assistant program, we had a student who was just featured in the Missouri Community College Association newsletter oh, talking about really what she went through to really 
uh, better her life mm -hmm. and make a new opportunity for herself and her young son. Mm -hmm. Well, when you and you don't have to get into necessarily the details of of one of those stories, but is there one that comes to mind for you when you think of this is such a great story that really reflects the essence of the program? Is there one that comes to mind that you can share? Well, with we us? see we see that really throughout each of the cohorts. I mean, we have students that travel many many miles. Mm -hmm. um, if they're on public transportation, oftentimes they have to make numerous transfers mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. to class on time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they walk to a campus or a clinical location so we see a lot of investment on the part of those individuals and I think it's a reflection of what we're trying to invest in them mm -hmm. and they now have the confidence and feel like they're ready to invest in themselves and get ready to give back. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about then the outcomes, what are the outcomes other than sort of employment? I mean, do we see, have you, is there data at this point to look at the long-term out outcomes too, as, as well as people move through their career where they might be getting into finding employment in an entry level, but you follow up with them a couple of years later and they've already moved to another level. Can you talk we sure a bit do. more about that? We sure do. Actually, throughout the program, uh, we do case noting to keep mm -hmm. track of where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, certainly we do log the employment and placement opportunities, mm -hmm. um, but we're very interested to hear where they've gone on to start to meet that long-term mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. um, PCTs, mm -hmm. um, those individuals are very good candidates to go into nursing and we have numerous candidates um, and, mm. and graduates, basically, that go on to work on their nursing degrees. Uh -huh. um, oftentimes, they work on in physical therapy, respiratory therapy. They can work in any other um, parts mm. of the allied health mm -hmm. field mm -hmm. because they've gotten their start and they've really started to kind of hone in mm -hmm. on where they would like to specialize. Mm -hmm. For those individuals that are medical assistants, mm -hmm. uh, right now those that are working within WashU School of Medicine, mm -hmm. they're getting opportunities to work in areas uh, with family medicine, mm -hmm. specialty medicine, orthopedics, mm -hmm. all different kinds mm -hmm. of specialty mm -hmm. um, groups mm -hmm. that really open the door for mm -hmm. future opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, one of the biggest benefits with employment with the health care providers here in the St. Louis area is they have tuition reimbursement. And so as a result, these individuals are getting the opportunity and being motivated mm -hmm. to continue their education. Mm -hmm. So now they're helping themselves, they're moving up the health care career pathway, mm -hmm. but they're also becoming very good employees mm -hmm. because they're motivated to learn more and to progress within that pathway. Mm -hmm. No, this is really wonderful to hear because I think so many times people, they don't know the pathway. You know, they right. see other people and they just don't know the pathway to get there. And I think everything you've described today has really step by step from the start with the portal program all the way through to the end really gives a clear, a clear you know, a pathway, as we're saying, to, to how to get the success and the outcome. Uh, we've got some graphics, and I want you to walk through me with them, because a lot of this has to do with enrolling, mm -hmm. which is kind of the next step. So I wanted to throw those up uh, so people can sort of see some of the dates and what we're looking at. And you can tell anyone interested in watching uh, how they can enroll in the program after what they've uh, heard today. So this obviously refers to the Most M Wins uh, grant program. And then we'll move to the next slide, and that's your website. So let's talk about here. This is upcoming training classes? Yep. Yes, we do have programs coming up this summer. Mm -hmm. um, starting in July, we have both medical assistant and patient care technician just a couple of weeks apart. Um, and then we have some additional classes scheduled this fall um, in October. So opportunities for individuals to get ready for both of those programs. We, can, we um, recruit continuously, and again, okay. you can see someone who may need to spend a little more time in that portal mm -hmm. because they're developing skills may not be ready for July, but they're probably going to be ready for October. That's what I was just about to ask you. How far in advance when we're looking at these dates mm -hmm. do you need? But you're saying you can, based on the portal program, you can determine if you're ready to go for mm -hmm. the July classes or even later in the fall. Right. Got it. And then we have another slide. and. Uh, this is the directions for the Absolutely. website, Absolutely. So right? for those individuals that are interested, they can go out to our websites. Uh, we're showing there the St. Louis Community College website with a forward slash of either medical assistant or patient care technician. Those uh -huh. links will take them directly to those programs. Um, they complete an online application right there after they read about the programs and see if that's of interest to mm -hmm. them. Um, once they submit their application, they have an opportunity to register to come to an information session, mm -hmm. which we hold every Monday and every Wednesday at the Forest Park campus. Mm. Um, and we do that there um, at 5600 Oakland Avenue. 
Um, and we hold those sessions mm -hmm. where we have just one person or we have 20 people. Really? We do them regularly really each week so really that cool. um, really there's no hesitation in terms of individuals sharing their interests and getting started with us. And with the number on the screen, people can just call to learn more kind of about what we've been talking about today they just can. to learn more about the programs? They can. They can also call the hotline and uh, we can get back in touch with them with uh, future details. Okay. And then I think our last our last slide, I think, is just so that HPOG grant. And so how does this, I mean, if you want to put this into context, you were alluding to it. This grant specifically helps underwrite then you said some of the transitionary costs I think you were saying from program to program or how does the HPOG grant actually fit into all of this if you want to remind us again? Yeah sure again it's one of the funding sources for those individuals that are going into either the PCT or medical assistant program. Okay. Again that, that's providing the funding for the cost of those programs. Got it okay yep. so it's the overall got it. Yep. I wasn't sure if there was something more specific. I mean in these last remaining minutes is there anything you want to add about this program? I mean you're doing this day in day out you're meeting all types of candidates. You're seeing the success stories. You're seeing the days that are harder than some on others, but you're really being start seeing it from start to finish. Is there anything else you want to add about it or any insight that you want to provide? We're just so excited to have the opportunity to provide awareness for yes. the programs. Um, we do a lot of outreach, but um, that outreach is often within the community and through word of mouth mm -hmm. um, type of recruiting. Mm -hmm. We don't have um, TV ads. We don't necessarily have radio spots. Mm -hmm. So this is a great opportunity mm -hmm to have individuals be aware of the programs. Um, we do events through career fairs, mm -hmm. through community groups, through church groups. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, we're always surprised um, how individuals will hear about the program. Mm -hmm. um, and we really are just very excited to have them know about it and get started with a healthcare mm -hmm. career. And if anyone has that slight hesitation, what do you say to them? Don't worry try, about it. There's what, what do you say? Try it. You know, mm -hmm. try it again. Sometimes we do have individuals that have tried programs before. Maybe they've tried college before. Mm -hmm. um, in this case, maybe they weren't successful initially. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we see individuals who, again, are still trying to get their life settled, mm -hmm. get some of those barriers mm -hmm. taken care of, mm -hmm. and now they're ready. Mm -hmm. And so typically what happens is students will now really start to succeed because the timing is right, right. and they're ready to learn. Yeah, no, this is wonderful. I mean, I learned so much today, and I, I guess so many times you hear about different grants, different programs, but you just don't see the full breakdown, and this is really comprehensive, and there's just step-by-steps it seems something in place to get you from start to finish. It and it's really excellent. You did a fabulous job talking about this and explaining this. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. All right. And thank you at home for watching. We had all that information for you to see, and we hope you go check it out and keep it right here on STL TV Experience St. Louis. Thank you.